I was lukewarm on the news that Wrath, Eon of Ruin was getting a 1.0 release. I knew its first act had gotten some decent press and generally favorable Steam reviews, but that was back in 2019 when the modern resurgence of boomer shooters was still in its earliest phase. Five years later and I'm not over these things, but I think my bar is a little higher. Wrath is leaving early access in a much different world than it entered, one where we're no short supply of games with fast paced arena shooting and punchy shotguns. That's especially true for Wrath and its gimmick, or lack thereof. Out of all the games that owe a debt to Quake, this one might be the quakiest. Its movement, its aesthetic, and even its hub based level selection all evoke the 90s id software classic to a T. A very deliberate design choice down to the technology that's powering it. That's all fine and dandy, but its overt Quake worship reminded me of some of last decade's lesser Kickstarter revivals, and had me expecting something that was maybe a bit too fan gamey for my tastes. But after spending 15 hours rolling credits on Wrath's 1.0 build, I'm pleased to report that this boomer shooter vastly surpassed my expectations, for reasons I wasn't anticipating too. It does stay very safely within Quake's long shadow, but it completely owns that territory. It's a game defined by its execution, not its ideas. There's nothing in its combat, presentation, or premise that will surprise you, and yet it manages to surprise by just being really damn good. In Wrath, Eon of Ruin, you play as... Actually, I don't, I don't know his name. I'm not sure he has one. Only a title. The Outlander. You're always in the first person and there's no mirrors. You only know what you look like because of the key art. And the facelessness of the character there communicates more about this game than any regular dude's face ever would. This is not a game about characters or people. It's a game about guns and the viscera they can produce when you shoot them at demons. The only time the game ever seizes control from you to give you a cutscene is a brief intro and outro that exists to establish that you're in a bad spooky place and you probably don't belong here. What little dialogue does exist is non-mandatory and you can speed right on by the dude who tries to deliver it to you if you want. Because you know what he has to say anyway. It's implied by the genre we're in. Take your gun, kill whatever finds its way to the other side of it, and keep doing so with more and more guns and larger and larger things. The developers set out to make a game whose narrative was, in their own words, unobtrusive. Not only have they succeeded on their own terms, but vindicated those terms in the first place. There is this mutual understanding of what we're here for, and it's nothing coming out of someone's mouth. Unless it's a bullet. Its premise is set up in seconds, and the real story, of you killing things, gets to unfold right after a brief tutorial. If you've played any of these, you've played Wrath. You've got a high default move speed with no sprint button, you've got these macabre shooting arenas with blood, guts, and indiscernible flesh all over the place, and you've got monstrous enemies that sport every weird mouth to limb ratio you can think of. When you start the game you begin in one of the three hub worlds. You progress through these hub worlds linearly, and you can do the five levels in each of them in any order. You'll quickly be introduced to the basics of running, jumping, and shooting, but also some of the skill based movement systems Wrath lets you take advantage of. You can charge up your wrist dagger to perform a lunging strike which is both a great way to kill enemies, but also an incredible boost to your horizontal mobility on or off ground. Before you even shoot your first bad guy you're being shown how to crouch mid jump to tuck your legs and clear ledges you otherwise couldn't. It's an approachable skill based movement system, slightly more advanced than just holding W to move forward, but coming in shy of something like quick strafe jumping in terms of difficulty to execute. It's just enough to make you feel like a badass without requiring too much in the way of practice. Clearing those jumps that are just a hair too long feels great, and you get lots of mid-air mobility thanks to your lunge's ability to correct direction. You get this first person platformer toolkit, but the game is still very explicitly combat focused. It just provides abilities, and sometimes arenas, more on that later, that give you lots of movement options. My first pull of the trigger was when I knew I was going to see Wrath to completion. The guns feel tactile, and the enemies all explode into appropriately gory chunks. You hit most of the major points along the weapon spectrum from pistol to rifle to big one shot mace, and they're largely themed up to fit Wrath's rotting and disgusting world. As you progress and unlock more guns, you can switch between them all freely as is the genre standard. The shotgun is the only one that even demands you reload, you're otherwise constantly swapping and shooting during encounters. One of those nice execution touches that distinguishes this from a lesser boomer shooter is mouse wheel scrolling, which not only cycles through your guns in order, but specifically omits guns that don't have any ammo, allowing you to frantically jump to the next viable pick then start blasting. 
You'll need to take advantage of little shortcuts like that because Wrath is a bastard. Even on its easiest difficulty setting, enemies are numerous, robust, and deal a lot of damage. It's less of an overt power fantasy than its kill all of the demons theming might imply. Successful completion of a level demands ducking in and around corners, managing long-term ammo supply, and not taking too much damage. There's no reliable self-healing mechanism aside from limited single-use healing shrines and some of the health files you can find lying on the ground. So before you start ripping and tearing, just keep in mind that the damage you take while in there is probably going to stick. It's satisfying to overcome Wrath's challenges, and while they are tough, you're given lots of tools to succeed. Not only do you have 9 formal weapons, you also get lots of consumable potions, grenades, and general utility spells to manage. Maybe most important in your arsenal is some good old quick save and quick load scumming, which rather than trying to fight, Wrath welcomes into its gameplay rules. You collect these wispy skulls as you progress, which can be dropped on the ground anywhere to act as a restart beacon. There's incentives to use them as conservatively as possible. They carry over to future levels, and you can even use them mid-boss encounter to skip replaying earlier phases. It allows for lots of control over your experience and where you save, without ever feeling cheesy because it's utilizing a limited resource. Drop one right before a tough jump in case you screw up, or if that upcoming room looks like a yeah they're gonna swarm me here room. It's an interesting system and all but required to use because Wrath's levels are absolutely huge. These are not get in and get out combat arenas. They are long 40 minute maps with discrete indoor and outdoor zones, connecting tunnels, and combat areas. I admit that was intimidating at first. Large and complex can very easily become directionless and obtuse in the wrong hands, but that was not the case here. Wrath uses a doomy red, blue, yellow keycard system that carves the map up into explicit zones that make it obvious where you have and have not yet ventured. Its levels also frequently use a spokes on a wheel design layout with large central areas that all the avenues eventually route back to once you've gotten the key or pulled the lever that path demanded. It gives the missions this obvious sense of direction and forward momentum despite their non-linearity, and getting stuck usually only takes a few minutes of combing the currently available space to undo. The levels are satisfyingly meaty without ever being labyrinthine, and it's a pleasure moving through them. Wrath is a fun game from the jump, but it does take a while for its actual jumps to feel meaningfully integrated into the combat. For a game that opens its tutorial with teaching you how to tuck your legs midair, it surprisingly reserves really platform-heavy combat arenas for the final of its three hubs. For the majority of its runtime, those uber-precise jump mechanics will get you to secret areas and little more. The actual combat spaces can be conquered just by running around and abusing line of sight. While that's certainly fun in its own way, and it's made satisfying because of how good the shooting is, this is hardly a locomotion-focused game despite its control suggesting it could be. I won't spoil it by putting it on screen or providing too much detail, but the final boss realizes Wrath's movement potential more than any other part of the game. It's got a wide open play space with multiple stories, and a perimeter littered with power-ups of increasing strength based on how tricky of a jump they're gated behind, the execution of which needs to be done mid-fight while you're getting swarmed and shot at. It's a very mechanically interesting encounter that's both a shining beacon of the game at its best, and perhaps an unflattering reminder that, while the rest of the game's combat arenas are awesome, they're seldom operating at that level. But that's a minor quibble about an otherwise well-realized FPS with punchy guns, a beautifully retro style, and levels that are expansive but well signposted. I'm excited to see how people respond to this one. I don't know if I was alone in my modest expectations, currently the early access build is just barely eking out a positive score, but I think it's being deflated by folks who felt burned by the 5 year heads down development cycle, rather than getting a content drip feed. Whether or not you're one of those people, I think Wrath Eon of Ruin successfully carves its own place in the Boomer Shooter Canyon. Not because of what it does, but because of how well it does.